Seeing at 6.30, I would open the Condemnation uh, Commission hearing on November 9th, 2021. First on the agenda is a notice of sent public hearing DED file number 170-02E3. Ideal movers seeks to build two self-storage buildings to include a driveway, retaining wall, storm water management system, utilities, and landscaping work within the state outlined 100 foot buffer zone and the local bylaw outlined by the 35 foot buffer zone, which includes BDW on South Maple Street, yeah, 10A, parcel 16-1 and 17. DEP comments to be addressed as well. We have a final number DEP has commented, send us a I believe you have a copy as well. I think you're looking at. And we look forward to your answering those points brought up by the DEP. But first, we can start the presentation. No. And uh George Smith will have to introduce himself for the hearing. All right. Um, well, with that, uh, my name is Dr. Sparkle. I am the civil engineer for the project. And uh, I've been tasked with putting together the notice of intent. And um, I'm going to try and work the screen and look at it and be behind it. So forgive me if I'm bouncing around. Maybe this will be a Sense of what's going on. <clears throat> and 
Briefly, I'll show you the site plan doesn't focus on the resource areas, but to, to show you what we're looking at here, uh, again, the highlight here's the 100 foot buffer, and here's the 35 foot buffer. And of course, all disturbances south of that 35 foot line, we've got a couple of detention basins on the north and west side. We've got a level spreader here to make sure that we've got slow lander velocity of the water before it discharges to the ground. And a uh, big old building, uh, uh, storage in the back, some landscaping, utilities, septic system down here. Uh, stuff that's all out of the buffer zone. Okay, so looking at some highlights about this application. Um, it is a buffer zone only project. You know, we're not getting into the wetland proper. Uh, we're looking at uh, about 38,500 square feet of disturbance in the buffer. Now, I, I, there's an asterisk here. I just had a correction. I realized when I was putting together my presentation that in my written narrative, I said 58,000 square feet of disturbance. I was including the 35 foot no disturbed buffer in that number. We're not disturbing it. So, really, uh, that was an error. It's 38,000 square feet between the, the 35 and 100 foot line. Um, uh, we are going to allow 23,500 square feet of farmland to revert back to buffer and BBW as part of this project. Of course, we have a stormwater management system that was reviewed in detail by Berkshire Design Group. We had a couple of rounds of revisions, but it was really uh, a nice straight review process. And uh, they were very pleased with the design and the uh, controls that I had in place. And of course, there's a soil erosion control plan affiliated with the project as well. And we try to put all that together with this plan, which is <clears throat> an overlay of the site plan and the resource areas with a little, you know, some of those existing conditions, colors, which might be a little familiar now. So again, there's a, the intermittent stream in blue, the wetland in purple. Um, we have the magic 35 foot no disturb line. So on the, the northern side, on the, the downhill side of the property, uh, we're having a double barrier, so it's going to be a silt fence plus hay bale barrier uh, to the uh, eastern and southern edges, which aren't you know, as, as significant. We do have silt fence all the way around. And this yellow area over here, so the existing water main that's behind Walmart comes down something like this. We need to connect here and extend it. And eventually, the municipality is planning on bringing that all the way down, I think to Mill Valley, maybe further. I'm not really sure of what the long range plan is. However, this section of pipe we need to get water to our facility, mostly for fire protection, but people like to flush toilets too, so I'm going to encourage that. And, uh, but since the, the stream crosses the road and there's culvert here, all of this falls within, I mean, it's in the pavement, but it is also within mathematically 100 feet of the weather. So this is why the town, DPW, is involved in the project for a sign-off because it's, it's their road. Uh, otherwise, everything else is on our property. Um, let's see. So that is the, the project in a nutshell. But we also have, um, I talked about the DEP letter, which I might have to bring up some other slides to get into some of those details. <coughs> so I, I have it maybe not memorized here yet. But um, the, there's the, the general content of it. So uh, the, the big thing, first point, that was like half of the first page, uh, Mark Stinson said, hey, I looked at some infrared false color images. There's some red flags here. I want you to look at them again. And he said that very firmly. So uh, Vicky Marcus was back out there. Uh, he was actually there on the 25th of October, and he has um, got out and done uh, verification in those areas. And um, I'm hoping that you've gone through Mickey's, I think, three-page letter, which I, I have with me if we need to do that together. Um, but most of that letter is basically the history and the RDA and, and you know how things got, the, the northern boundary got established. And then he verifies that, well, OK, there isn't any more DVW on the property, but those infrared images let me go back to maybe this guy, and I can get some other imagery as well. But um, he does say that, so you can, these are contours here. You can see that there's looping contours. These are descending. So there's a catch basin actually right here. There's a drain that runs through this field. Um, and south of that even, at 85 feet, 
according to Mickey South of the lot line, is an isolated vegetative wetland, which, um, according to Mickey, is, is not a regulated wetland. It doesn't have an affiliated buffer zone. And if it, if it was a, a bordering vegetated wetland, um, we would certainly have more buffer zone on the property, but we'd also be beyond the 35-foot limit. So in a lot of ways, it wouldn't impact this project even if it was a regulated wetland. I mean, we, we'd show a little more disturbance in the buffer zone. But we would not be, we would be another 50 feet from the magic 35 foot line. So that's, that's off the, the, the screen down here. Um, so that was the main thing that Newton's letter pointed out and addressed point one of the DEP letter. Uh, in that letter, and kind of going from memory as well, uh, there were some technical points that uh, Mark Simpson brought up. Uh, to that, one of them was, uh, in my narrative, I said that the intermittent stream may or may not be an intermittent stream. It is an intermittent stream, so that that's not wasn't accurate. And a, a habit of mine of bu um, buffer zone only projects, I sometimes still call the parts of unlimited projects, uh, even though there is no such thing in the buffer zone. Since we're not in the wetland, the resource areas directly, the, that prose and text is just not applicable here. Um, and Let's see. Then, other technical points. He also, Mark Simpson asked about the level spreader, uh, which I'm going to jump down back to here. So, well, maybe I'll get to this one. It's a little more clear. So, we have two detention basins here and here. They converge to a common discharge point in the level spreader. Um, it is, yeah, the DP got, DEP guidelines say that I needed, a, I think, a 11 foot wide level spreader. I provided a 30 foot wide level spreader. Um, I just I had a room and I saw no reason to, to, to squeeze it down the minimum design standards. Virtual Design Group uh, had a couple of questions uh, because I kind of ignored it, my hydraulic model, because it, it wasn't significant in the hydraulics, but um, they wanted me to go back into that. So we went back and forth just for one little round where I went to verify what is the discharge velocity. Know, how much head is coming out of there. And we've got, I think for the 100 year storm, it's something like two feet per second velocity coming out of that. So um, it's really a very conservative level spreader design. And that's also out of the 35 foot buffer. So there's no point source discharge. And really, I've, I've exceeded DEP's design requirements for that structure. Virtual Design Group has verified that. And I have copies of their letters too if you want to go into that. Um, yes, sir. In that photo, mm -hmm. is that the septic system in the corner, in the lower right hand corner? Yes. Is that going to be in a, the affected, the uh, uh, non, whatever you call it, the wetland? The isolated? The yeah. isolated wetland is, well, is 85 feet at the closest to this boundary, and then this is another <laughs> 15 feet in, so we're already about 100 feet to the edge, but there's also no buffer. Uh, on, okay. on that matter, so we're, we shouldn't have a problem with that. Okay, thanks. Yes. Um, and back to the DEP letter, I think I basically covered most of it. Um, yeah, there's a isolated vegetative wetland 85 feet south, and Mickey goes on, I quoted, quoted, but he says there, there's no evidence of any additional safe break or other, other wetlands. There are other wetlands on site other than what was shown in the um, RD. So, which, it caused me a bit of a heart attack when this letter came up because, of course, we go and spend all of this design engineering effort based upon what we thought was a solid line, and then there was a question, hey, make sure that it's a solid line. Uh, SWCA has, has verified that, so I'm, I'm confident that we're, we're in good shape on this project in terms of the resource areas and the design around it. Um, but I think that generally covers the DP's letter of Richard Design Group's input. Um, the overall project and resource area impacts. So you, have you discussed what you're presenting with us to Mark Stinson? I have, when I got the letter from Mark, I called him up. And we definitely had a conversation and he informed me how adamantly he, how adamant he was about having a verification of those uh, infrared images that showed potentially wet and in fact verified wet area south of the site. Yeah, Mickey Marks did that too, correct? He did that. He went back in the field like every 25th. Okay. And that, that 
dedication to forward to most instances then? Yes, um, by both Mickey and myself, um, because uh, Mickey's letter, the DEP was CC, and when I wrote my response to this commission, I included Mickey's letter um, and sent everything also to Mark so Stinson. So, is Mark Stinson happy at this point? Which is well, I have no idea if he's happy. That's, that's the thing. He, he has not responded. So he, he has not responded back. He got the first copy November 1st. It's now the 9th. He's had a week. Okay. I haven't heard from him. We're going to go with what you presented this Yeah. Is it? Doesn't Hadley have a vital one that says no, no three stories? Only two and a half or two stories? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's not a it's, it is a zoning question. Uh, to answer the question, we are lower than the requirements of the zoning body. Is it because okay. it's also industrial zone too? It is industrial zone. That's okay. The difference. Yeah. yeah, I think you get a little bonus there. Right. And now is the town be cleaning the intermittent stream that is mostly called a ditch? Yeah, most people would refer to it as a, as a ditch. It, it certainly doesn't look like a natural riverine right. conduit, but uh, it, it surely carries water. I do not know who is, I mean, I, I would assume, and this is an assumption, and maybe Mr. Smith knows, but as, as a farm ditch, I believe it would probably be gutted out every uh, decade or so. Right. Um, if that needs to continue happening, uh, because it's serving water from other areas, and what's what's the standard policy of when that ditch needs to get cleaned out? I, I don't think that's really as necessary. Sometimes it's every year, and sometimes it's every 15 years. In agriculture, they present some special exemptions. Certainly. But the only way to do that now, now that's going from agricultural use commercial. Sure. And the protection from growing yeah, women won't have that magical growth. Right, which means mean. that we'd have to, if, if there were an impediment um, to so this, you'd have to go back. To we'd have to be back here and yeah. probably file an RDA with the intention to clean up that. Yeah. That's yeah. another night. Yeah. That is hopefully yeah. another night in the distant future. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, just going back to uh, slide five. I'm just, I'm just curious I, I, you know, what this is going to look like from the road. You know, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, like, like in, the, in the center of that building, what, what's the existing elevation as opposed to what the slab is going to be? Okay, so I might have to get a little closer to read some of the existing conditions. I'm just wondering how much higher, higher up it's going to be. Not, not too much, so to get up here. So this is a 99 contour through here, that's 100, yeah. And the finished floor is at 103. So we are uh, three, four feet higher than existing grade right in the middle of the site. Um, and that is largely in part because um, the stormwater management systems are here and here. This isn't too bad, but um, as we're getting close to the resource area, we've got shallow groundwater. So in order to do the infiltration above the groundwater and have the basins above the groundwater, we had to raise the whole site up about three feet. My, my sister, that general property, that here, if you go back to Mount Farms Mall, that whole area, there's a lot of clay in that area. There, there it is. is. There it is. We got yeah. really lucky. Is this, this, this mound through here, where we have a bunch of soils tests? Sand. We've got several feet of sand above the clay, which, frankly, saved my technical butt when I was introduced <laughs> to this I know when Pantry mall, they had to bring it just three, four feet, five feet of ground from the site. Yes, in the, the building uh, foundation area, they are going to be um, bringing all the fill to the site and concentrating it just on Reload. the footprint to preload it, get the moisture out of the clay, and reconsolidate that material. I'm not the geotech on the project, but I do understand that they're planning on um, preloading. I can imagine a three story building. In Basically, a storage facility. A storage facility. At least yeah. pretty substantial floor loads. I'm sure it's going to be heavy. Or it would open an office space. Yeah, that would be an office space. But that's, that's, that's what you know is the, the term. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always interested in the structural stuff, but it's, you know, I, I get something I get scary. And the septic system, you were able to stay up four feet with groundwater and everything, no problem. I mean, yeah. Is it going to be a lot higher than the no, no, it's not. It's, it's a slightly lower than the pavement. Um, I don't have grades on the septic system on this drawing. I'd have to go back to others, but we have a little retaining wall around here. I was going to say, is that, is that a retaining wall along yes. the whole northern border? We have a retaining wall here because we couldn't, here we can grade out the 35 foot, but here we just, we just didn't have room. So 
slightly expensive bit of infrastructure there. And similarly, we have plans for a, a confinement wall. And this one's only like two or two and a half feet high. So the, the, the north only retaining wall next to the 35 foot wetland zone. Yes. How tall is that retaining wall? At its highest, I believe it's six feet. Six feet. And you're yeah. able to do all that work outside the 35 foot zone? Yes. You're building it, construction. Yeah. So step one on this site is getting down that barrier and working back from that. Okay. And of course, pre construction, the commission will be invited out. I'm sure that will be part of the order of conditions. You get to inspect the controls, make sure that everything looks like a plan. We'll need that to be surveyed. Of course, we put an elevation change in that site. It's quite out of this. And the walls. Three quarters of the roll is flat. Yeah. The rest of the thing is a little great. Okay.
It's convenient place to push snow right over the retaining wall. Yeah. There'll be a, a guardrail there, so you won't really be able to do that. They could they could use a loader to put it all over the other retaining wall. Hey, yes, I can't deny that. So, um, that has to be mentioned in the snow removal plan. Fair. That uh, all the snow is to be stored on site and no the thirty five foot no disturbed all the means no snow. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think the strongest place for that would be the order conditions uh -huh. at this point. I know the, the stormwater report and all, all of that, that's already done. I mean, it's not that we could always go back and, and ask to make a modification, but since that's an environmental issue and it's the order that would be attached to the deed, I think having that as a condition in perpetuity makes far more sense than going back to the stormwater right. report. And I, I fully concur. Like, we're, we're there's, a lot of, there's a lot of impervious surface on that site going to the retention basins. They want to get the level spreader. Yes. And then you want to make sure the snow is not off the retention basins. Definitely. It doesn't help anybody. It makes a mess down there. Oh, well, yes. It does. It's, it's, not, it's not clean snow. No. So. Catch basins all have sumps. All the catch basins have sumps, and they are fitted with. Um, filter cartridges that are uh, TSS removal devices. So the so immediate water quality certification. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean as part of the stormwater management standards and meeting the water. Now this has already been done. Planning board's already blessed us. Yes. They're done. We are so they did all the spray that you do without the security. They did. Okay. They're 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 the agenda of yeah. Yeah, just peer reviewed by director design in terms of the technical Stuff, as well as the zoning bylaw. And they did a great review, actually. Yeah, like, uh, is there a plan for it? Is, it, is there an operation maintenance plan? Yes, there, plan? There, there's an OM plan, including, plan, including, a, park plan, including, plan, including a, a schedule for the maintenance of all the BMPs, yeah. sweeping the lots, when you have to inspect patch basins, when you have to clean patch basins, the same for the infiltration system, because we've got a large infiltration system here under the pavement, uh, the basins, the content basins, of course. Mowed down and cleaned out on occasion. We shouldn't get too much crap in there because the basins themselves have two tiers of protection. Um, and one of the very first tiers of uh, fine, uh, fine filter that they have to swap out every year. So one filter per basin. There are very many basins. I mean, it seems like they've got, done all their homework here. Mm -hmm. Did any other board members have any questions? Right? Oh, good. No, well, uh, well, uh, uh, Set aside for the 35 foot no disturbed uh, zone be marked somehow so that we can say, no, you are 35 feet away, you are 40 feet away, whatever. I don't know what your claims are. For construction or in perpetuity? In perpetuity. That is not uh, part of the plan, the, but we could establish stakes or. From the foundation or something. Planted. So many feet from the foundation is the start of the 35 foot no disturbed zone. Oh, actually, we looked at the plan. Yeah. They can scale off the building. Right. Right, yeah. Well, that, 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 that's what I mean. But as long as, it, long as the main presenter does it. I think the retaining wall is a good portion of the 35 foot. Right, right. And then you get the retention basin. So you get out beyond the retention basin once it's constructed, they're not going to be accessing that, that 35 foot zone. Right, I know that. I know that. But as long as that, as long as that 35 foot zone is, is marked somehow, some way. I'm sure there's going to be some mowing going on. on the oh, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, minimal, I, I tend to encourage um, meadow plantings, especially around basin areas, uh, wildflowers yeah. and pollinators, um, for a variety of reasons. One, much lower maintenance. Two, meadow absorbs like eight times more water than a grass field ever will. It's far better for the native wildlife and, um, it's, again, very, very inexpensive to maintain. And you, Usually it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than some uh, special conditions, I can see that the added to the order conditions. It seems like you've addressed all the encounters from the DEP. All your work is outside the 35 foot zone. You've got to really address that. Yep. Um, I would ask the commission, are you prepared to close the hearing? Yes, I'm, I'm prepared. Are you? 
to say that. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I so move. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, you know, we'll call vote for all those in favor. Edwin? Aye. Bingham? Aye. Gary? Aye. Opposed? We don't have any. Steve Sinkwitz, the other board member of five, is on vacation this week. And Gordon Smith, the other fifth member, and has to recuse himself from this hearing. So we have a three out of five votes. We have, we have a quorum, uh, or majority, I should say. So, seeing that, we'll close the hearing, and then we'll have to say, are there any other further questions by anybody who pursue or proceed to uh, special conditions? Let's go to the special conditions. I think one special condition that I want to have is no snow or right. in store or, or place in the 35 foot buffer zone. Right, absolutely. Detention basin areas. In the event of a severe storm, they will have to be trucked off site. Makes sense. I know that. that. Give you permission to pile the snow on the perimeter that you show for the south, especially if it does fall onto the abutter's property. You have to get special permission from the abutter in the event of something like that. In any case, you're buying the property from the abutter. I'm sure your abutter will be a friend your neighbor. Okay. No, normally? <laughs> but that's uh, not our issue. You could have proper road control if you've already done that in the plans for construction. Yes. You know the fires are against the construction. Construction period and permanent. I would, I would suggest periodic uh, meetings to the process. Periodic what? Meetings that would be allowed to inspect oh. the site. Sure. Mm -hmm. No. Anything, what do you think of anything else? What are you looking at construction? Does anybody have an answer? Construction? <laughs> <Did you start? laughs> Time frame?
sorry. Yeah. So I want you to go to the Hearing tonight, I'm going to open up notice of 10 public hearing DEP file number 170 0282. Keith Ravine seeks approval for a residential driveway crossing in and NHDSP priority habitat on North Castle Street. Uh, 
know, in order to comply with the conditions. In, in this, you, you, will, you will understand that whatever disturbance the 590 square feet will be counted for the total 5,000 square feet for the whole parcel. So yes. If there's any other disturbance on the other remaining large portion of the parcel, this will be subtracted from that. that yeah, that would make sense. So far, it's be willing to do that. My understanding that there wouldn't be any other uh, disturbance outside of this. We don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the parcel. So. Correct. Oh, yeah. out, well, in this parcel, that's the current proposal. So, so you, you know, if you're taking that off of a larger parcel, you, you, you only allow 5,000 square feet for the whole parcel to begin with. Oh, correct. Uh, and this parcel in 2020 was fully subdivided, and it is its own parcel. Uh, it was subdivided from a larger parcel, but that, that parcel is no longer, that's a separate piece of land. It's owned by the same owner, but it is a... When was it subdivided? 2020. So that's great. Doesn't matter. It's the same owner of record. Okay. You just can't, you can't get the parcel divided into 20 pieces by the same owner and say, I'm going to get 5,000 square feet for each parcel. Oh, no, that, okay, that, yeah, that part that's makes... That's what I'm getting at. Right, that makes sense. So when it's common ownership, right. it, would, it would be subtracted from that. So the, yeah, that makes, that makes total sense. I, I didn't see that. To argue that point, um, I thought it might have been a question of whether how many square feet of 35 foot uh, buffer zone are you disturbing as well? There's approximately 680 feet of land within the 35 foot zone. So about 1,300 square feet total. That's correct. Yeah. This uh, is this is we're looking at a residential structure, we're not looking at a business structure. No, we're looking at a residential structure here uh, that's a 1,650 square foot footprint and a standard 24 by 24 two car garage. Right. Uh, it's a 12 foot wide driveway. It widens, of course, to meet the garage to allow for you know two cars to park outside the garage. Uh, and then it's a 12 foot lane as it's going through. Right. So, uh, so I'm looking at the driveway. First uh, line is that the 100 foot zone or the 35 foot zone? Uh, the 35 foot zone is right here. Okay, and then it goes and falls all the way down. It swoops down. Uh, the 35 foot zone follows along okay, this. Okay, the 35 foot zone. And along this edge here, yes. Um, so he's crossing it. So there's so, no yeah. Are you are you establishing a building envelope right now, or that's the goal? Yes. It's basically tucked up against the setbacks that would be on the site. Yeah, it's residential. Yeah. Uh, is it septic or sewer? It would be sewer, is my understanding. It's possible. So the sewer and water lines are coming in where? In the, in the, in the roadway? Or? Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I'm under the understanding that that would be proposed to go uh, in the same space as the driveway to limit the amount of disturbance in the wet. But they're not showing at the present. Uh, they are listed right here for water line and sanitary line connection. So they're just they're... not showing up in the. They think they might have been, when I add color to the to the site. They're they're showing up. They're showing up here to come through the site here. They're so those are going to be installed at the same time as the driveway. That's correct. Yeah. And after this purpose, you're going to have to put in the same. There's no one back later to do it. Correct. Yeah. The, the idea was to do that at the same time to minimize the disturbance. So it's the same same body of disturbance. So, have you addressed all the topics from the DEP? Have you read our rules for this place? Uh, we can walk right through those. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, of course, the first comment is uh, uh, related to the fact that this is looking to be estimated as a limited project under uh, 310 CMR 1053. No, we got the first one about the uh, NGSP as issued the determination. Oh, yes, and NGSP did. Uh, issue its determination. Uh, decision. They found that there was no, uh, it was, it is within uh, this uh, area of priority habitat and, and estimated habitat here. Uh, but it, it, they found that there's no significant taking. And so that they said that this project would, is, is approved on, on their behalf. Uh, one of their comments was to make sure that the erosion control material, as soon as site is stabilized, is it, it removed. That is kept temporary. Abandoned on site. Okay. So we have no, we have no disagreement or, or further comment on that. That makes sense. Okay. 
itself there. What's, what's the next one? So the uh, next comment from two was, uh, note that it was a limited project. Sorry that I skipped over the NHASP uh, component. Uh, and uh, that was uh, really a request for you know, uh, us and for yourselves to review the comments that um, Mark Simpson had sent regarding this mass DEP guidance on limited projects. Right. Uh, so unless you guys have further questions on that and ramifications of that with this, I don't. Uh, there wasn't anything specific to meet with that, more than he was just recommending to follow and, and, and read additional information on that process. So I, it is my understanding that we are following uh, the performance standards and the appropriate guidelines to, to request that within, within that uh, statute of the regulations specifically. Uh, In a nutshell, if there were things that you guys found that this was significant taking, we had consulted with NHESP. Uh, there were issues with rare uh, wildlife that was being impacted. Uh, there were areas of watering vegetative wetlands or other resource areas that were not being met for the performance standards or, or mitigated or replicated for. Uh, then you have the ability to, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's, not, a, it's not a guaranteed green light, is essentially what I, I took away from that. So it's, it's up to you guys if you're interested in uh, approving that as a limited project, as a, as a crossing. Uh, but we found it uh, acceptable to, to uh, request that uh, field access to the site. So are there any, should we talk about that further? I'm not, I'm not okay, great. Uh, so for number three, uh, uh, it was listed that uh, there's no more agricultural activities in this area. Currently, this entire site, uh, this parcel, and uh, what is to, to the north of it, is all a uh, mowed field right now. So uh, there were wetland flags when uh, this was surveyed. Uh, it, was, it was delineated in July and flagged. Uh, and those, we were looking at the flags today, they were partly there, uh, but they had been mowed several times. So the comment is that, uh, Say it's no longer being used for agricultural purposes. Uh, anything in that once there is an NOI that has been submitted, that area can no longer be mowed. It needs to be let it let be. And we have no disagreement with that. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, for number four, uh, uh, Mark was suggesting that uh, Mass DEP may not necessarily require a water quality certificate uh, for the. Um, or eventually wet and fill, uh, but that uh, likely would be uh, requesting that water uh, water quality certificate for the remaining parcel by the original owner, kind of back to the same. Um, uh, uh, this would be cumulative based on that, that common ownership. And that makes sense. It's my understanding that, that Keith has no further interest in subdividing the other parcel. Um, so, um, but any. Uh, such stipulations makes, makes total sense to us that there would be an additional uh, water quality study that would be, would be needed for any other activity uh, on the other parcel. Uh, number five uh, was, so currently what we have proposed here are two eight inch uh, culverts uh, that are not very below the ground, that are flush to the ground, and at the ends of each uh, culvert we've got a three foot by three foot uh, roughly a riprap pad in order to minimize uh, any sediment uh, movement uh, through those uh, culverts. And, um, hydrologically, according to the engineers at Berkshire, I'm a, I'm a landscape designer at Berkshire, I should, I should state that as well, um, but not an engineer, but we have site engineers in house, and so um, that uh, uh, the hydrologically it's uh, sufficient for water flow. What uh, Mark is requesting is that the area should be redesigned to uh, have a larger opening for more ecological connectivity and to have those pipes be depressed into the ground so that it's not a concrete surface that a salamander or any other animal would, would, would uh, traverse but would have actual earth. So uh, that part makes total sense to us. We have no disagreement. Uh, it, it was our you know, take from that uh, after reading these comments that what we propose is that this would be more of an infiltration chamber. So think of a very hard polymer plastic semicircular space that would be like half of an oval. So you could meet Mark's standards of saying two feet high, three feet wide, 
but we don't need to take an entire pipe and bury half of it. So it would be a less expensive option in order to meet the same goals. Do the, do the, do the, do the new plan show this? Uh, the plans do not show that right now, so it would be happy to revise or have it be part of the order of conditions that this is what is mandated based on the parks recommendation, and then we could, you know, uh, if you were comfortable saying we agree to this, and then but send us the plans after the fact, we can do that too. That's um, we don't we don't disagree with his with his so his comments whether that. Whether we meet again or whether we close the hearing tonight and, and agree that this is formally what, what is to be done, that's, that's fine. We don't have a, a disagreement with that. Mm -hmm. With comments. And how big would those, ar those arches be? Those arches are roughly two feet tall and they are three feet wide. So you're just getting greater landscape you connectivity. Because you, you've got two eight inch pipes there, which you are, would you just be doing? One of the so we could just do one. So Mark's recommendation is that in a really large wetland crossing, you would have these every 50 feet. This crossing from where the, you see the flags here to the edge of the flags here is 25 feet. So one would be sufficient. And hydrologically, that volume is the same if we do one. Uh, one, probably more. Right, yeah, exactly. So with 16, 16 inches worth of diameter versus uh, three feet. Um, and so then, number six, um, that he says that although the driveway width is 12 feet wide, the actual, uh, you know, there, there are slopes, what we're proposing are two to one slopes off the side of that uh, driveway, and that, that whole total footprint is part of the 590 square feet, not just the 12 foot wide driveway corridor. Um, and that he was asking uh, if uh, walls were taken into consideration rather than having a uh, sloping uh, uh, embankment on the edge of the driveway. And so the, the main reason for the embankment was simply cost savings for the client. Um, the walls would be at least a foot, and by the time there's, they're, they're going to have a little bit of a batter, a little bit of a slope going down there, roughly at its tallest, it's, it's uh, two and a half to three feet tall. So it's probably gonna be about 18 inches on both sides. And the uh, a two to one slope with that would be five to six feet on, on each side. And so at, you know, at three feet tall, six feet down. So there's a little bit of square footage savings in terms of reduction of the water registry well, but compared to the cost of putting in the uh, concrete block retaining walls, we were pitching this option um, because oh, yeah. I don't think I have a problem with So that, that was sort of the, the trade off of seeing you know, what would, yeah. if this was uh, more like kind of about the pristine wetland habitat, I think we would take a different approach to try to really and then do a pay more to yeah. minimize our footprint. Yeah. 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 Do you think home is okay with having a house in your front yard? Extent and 
this replication area. This replication area is abutting the wetland area, so uh, although the area is flagged, those it's very similar in elevation. It's, it's very much connected to the hydrologic conditions, but it's ever so slightly changed enough for there to be a, long, a line drawn in the sand. So, short of it is, is that uh, we didn't do it ahead of time, but we're happy to see that it is included as an order mm -hmm. in order to verify that uh, 100 or so conditions are met with the replication. Did you say that the soil uh, that's existing under where the driveway is going to be transplanted over there? That's correct. That's the idea. It's to take the, the, the wetland soils that are here and move them here. That's the short one. All of the same elevation. Correct, yeah. In order to be able to keep it within the same hydrologic condition and essentially, essentially extending the wetland out this way. Are there any other questions? I think. Uh, to some of these talking points, we could be addressed through the order of conditions. Uh, is that is that going to be a full foundation? Is there going to be a sump pump? And if there's a sump pump, there's a discharge. Oh, that's a good question. It's my understanding that this would be a slab on gray. Okay. Uh, but uh, that wasn't something that had we had fully considered. There's not uh, plans for this have not yet been built. So. That's a good point, yeah. So how does the board feel about do they, do they have to come back before they build the house and see something change? Would the board want to talk to I think they should. I think the landowner should or the uh, Well the issue is this this is a notice of intent. We're gonna require them to file another notice of intent to come back to build the house because they're showing a, a footprint already. Um, well we just said this doesn't tell us where that's the proposed position of the building. It's not set in stone, right? If this were for food, uh, uh, approved, then you might have saying that that's where we're proposing to put the. You can have tweak it a little bit. No, this is, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, uh, very minor tweaks. But otherwise, yes, yeah, so there's any significant change to this. It would yeah, be you still have to come down. Yeah, we would have to return. That seems to me that if I was to switch hats, uh, I would expect the I would expect me to, to return if there are significant changes to what right. had been approved. Right. Yeah. Uh, do we want to? As far as I understand, Keith is Keith supports you know all of what we're proposing. Um, so uh, you know we're, we're here yeah. clearly on his behalf. So uh, yeah, this is a. Do we want to just say it's going to be in a visit? Or well, the applications for residential work. Right. And that's not going to change. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll address that in the order. Yeah. So if there's not any further questions, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So move. Second. Okay. Moved by Echo. Second by Gordon. Roll call on this. Edwin Matuska. Aye. Gordon Smith. Aye. Raymond Skowski. Aye. Gary Kelsey. Aye. The stimulus is a uh, vacay, so we got four, four approvals, zero against. So we can go on and uh, discuss the order conditions. Do you want to increase the uh, wetland application? So, yeah, you, I think it's Number seven, though, by Mark Stimson probably is more important. You're going to say two to one is that we have a wetland environmental scientist right. on site when the replication area is built. So I think we should take this number seven comment from Mark Stimson mm -hmm. and word that in such a way that we get any other conditions. Okay. We'll, we'll work down the list first. Um, we do have a note in our, not to say that you shouldn't do that, you should, I, I agree. There is already a note uh, calling this out. On the plans? Yeah, saying that this should happen. Okay. 
So but, we but, uh, please, please do. Uh, <coughs> let me of course, no, no, the fact that it's on the point, I plan to record right. with, with, with the recorded picture, correct? Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, that's bit, uh, it would be in these, these notes here, but yes, uh, but it makes sense to just to be stated. Have to be stated. It's, 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 it's uh, there's nothing wrong with you doing it. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt your No, oh, it's just a case where, you know, we're going to have a party that releases that plan showing that new two foot by three foot mm -hmm. structure for the crossing. Right. The question is, does the board want to wait until we get those plans to do it to work? Or do you need another meeting? Or do you want to try to do it tonight? Well, what if he didn't do anything for six months? Are we going to accept this plan? No disrespect intended, and please don't take any away from the trust this guy. Well, <laughs> we're on a no disrespect. <laughs> this is a recorded meeting, we have public records. Yeah. Uh, it's not he said, she said. If we'll, we'll be significant by our address on your plans about the wetland replication, mm -hmm. I don't know if we necessarily have to put it in the order conditions. Okay. It's on the plans. Yep. How's the rest of the board feel about that? I agree. It's just yeah. making it's, order it's part, part, it's part of it. Yeah. That is part of the order conditions of that plan. The problem is the plan that we have is going to be revised. So we want to make sure that that's not taken out. I would say keep it as a note, if I, if I may make, can I make that suggestion? Yeah. Um, is that uh, Mike crossing the line? But, you want to keep, uh, keep it in order though. Yeah, yeah, keep it in there. And then it's, yeah. uh, it doubles down on uh, kind of environmental protections and, and, uh, and right. getting it to happen. So we're going we're gonna to do an order of what the mitigation notes. I'm going to keep myself on the trustworthy side. <laughs> how are we going to word this one, Charlotte? How are we going to word this? <laughs> So we're going to require a witness scientist to be on site when her vocation is built and or when work is occurring in the BBW. Yeah, we'll and all the necessary precautions will be bad note that you're going to do them anyway, but I just want to state for the record that all the necessary precautions will be taken. Yeah, uh, big or nails or straw bottles or mm -hmm. I'm just restating it. That's Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And this will make Mark Simpson happy when he sees that. Yeah. Okay. I think it's, uh, there's probably a lot more reason to put it in here that way they won't. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so, but the uh, National Heritage wants those uh, barriers taken down. I think, so. I think we should take those so, four. You highlighted that, Charles? I think we should put those in the order. Okay. So, the NHESP um, made, made notes that based on the information provided and the information contained in our database, the district finds that a portion of the project as currently proposed must be conditioned in order to avoid the prohibited take of stateless species. To avoid a prohibited, prohibited take of state species, the species, the following conditions must be met. I think we should put these four in the order conditions. Mm -hmm. Recordation. Prior to the start of work, the applicant shall record this letter with the attached plan and the registry of deeds so as to become a part, record part of the chain of title for the property. Prior to the start of work, the applicant shall provide a provision with proof of said recordation. Right. Second, Temporary erosion control barriers shall be removed as soon as possible following the site stabilization to ensure that they do not become barriers to wildlife movement. Right. Three, a compliance report within 30 days of completion of work, the application applicant shall submit a brief written report, including photographs showing the previous and final conditions that demonstrate compliance with this authorization. And four would be what data protection act the following following for any renewal extension amendment. For certification of compliance with any order conditions associated with the site pursuant to the MA Wetlands Protection Act, the applicant should sell, similarly file a division pursuant to 310 CMR 10.59. So I basically going to take this block and put that into the order conditions. Right. And uh, one thing, tell them if, if they're 
you're going to plow the driveway, don't put it in the wet land. Don't put the snow in the Okay. Yeah. You know, I hate that in my thing, but. Sure. Just there. Do, do whatever you can to advise the, whoever's going to plow the driveway not to push the snow into the wet land. So well, two things are going to test the when this is not going to be a commercial site, but. Right. So I know. It's so soft, right. same. Right. I know. It's a 12-foot driveway, it's not a, up to an acre of paved park in your area. Right. I know that. But the, the salt or sand that is used, you know, using the ones that are these ones. Most people have a driver who use sand and salt. That's the problem. There's commercial out there. That's all I'm just saying. That's there. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. 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 Y
I, I Gary, uh, for all houses, okay? We'll be uh, putting you more than this as well. Thank you, guys, for your time. Thank you. Well, very good presentation. Thank you. Thanks for being this morning. It was, it was a little less color than, than Bucky, and uh, mm -hmm. that's, you know, okay. the, uh, that's so something that's well. Well. the question of the term of applicability public meeting continues. Next half, seeks to modify the solar array for energy storage between installing concrete pads and poles in Parkersville off of West King Center Drive. Now, 10 D, parcel 29. I'll let Charlotte fill us in on what's happening, because we've continued this a couple of times. Right. Right. Yeah. Why? Yeah, we haven't heard from the applicants, so she can explain the yeah. discussion. Yeah, so um, I, and seeing that that was continued a couple of meetings, I got in contact with the folks who did the delineation over at SWCA and the folks at Nexan. And I come to find out that uh, Valerie Miller of SWCA is no longer employed there, and um, Justin Cameron was also, and Nexan is also no longer employed. So I now have a point of contact. Um, with someone Chris Clark from Mexico, who will be uh, communicating with me about the project, Mickey Marcus from SLBC is on vacation until the end of the month. So until he's back, um, yeah, he won't be involved. He's out of the country, I think. But uh, I'm hoping to arrange a site visit just to get familiar with the project and cut up the speed. So hopefully we'll be able to put something on for next month. Right. Um, now that I know who we'll to be talking to and not emailing ghosts any longer. <laughs> so, I think uh, I'm going to ask me to take a motion to continue this to the next month oh. meeting. But I need to get the date. I did that with my calendar for the fourth night. Second Tuesday in December. Yeah, I think. We're getting the dates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I should have had that before. My bad. Second Tuesday? Yep. December 14th. So December 14th is now scheduled to come to the meeting. Stolen Edge. 
that swamp there, you know? Uh, before the bus company, on the right hand side as you're heading towards Amherst. Oh, over what, like 116? Uh, so you, you go over 116, you go down the, the, the little hill and it's on the right uh, hand right side. Yeah. Elvis Forges to be cutting down 67 feet between now and the spring at three inches away. The site visit was conducted in October. Yep. With Andrew Matusko mm -hmm. and Shower Davis, our Conservation Commission member. Yep. Check staff. And they confirmed uh, the, the trees to be hazardous. Permission was granted. Work will be done by the Forges themselves. Right. It was. They were. The trees were leaning. Uh, they got an emergency order before by the previous chairperson and uh, our Janice Stone. Mm -hmm. And we asked that they were starting to fall over. They were starting to uproot the dirt underneath. So we we suggested you cut the trees down, leave the stumps, and that's it. So that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. So they say. So I don't know if they did or not. You two walk, you went down and you basically documented the street there. Right. So you have record of it, so we'll leave it at that. I right. as well. I wasn't sure if the commission would want me to do the paperwork the same way did before, or if you were satisfied with the verbal permissioning. Let's, let's get it, let's establish a paperwork trail, and then we'll be all set. Okay. We covered our ass. That, that would be nice enough. Bills and correspondence, invoices for MACC membership and workshops attended by conservation agents, so it is. The purpose of training. Yeah. Okay. Do we have those? Yes. Okay. I just handed them to Gary. Good. So, uh, for the membership for NACC, and then I attended several workshops um, for the. So, the membership dues are $60, the conferences were $300. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that exceeds the budget or not. If, if it does, I'll take the $10 out of pocket. We will take yeah. care of it somehow. Okay. Um, so, do I have permission to sign it? Yes. We have a motion to come on the board? I uh, so move that Gary uh, act as our agent in signing these bills. Second by the board. All those in favor? Aye. Board member? Raymond? Yes, sir. All three? Yes, sir. Thank you. Screaming and being dragged into the computer age. I would. So I think part of the same camp. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, emails are the best thing I see. You like email? Yeah, I yeah. look at it. I'll talk with email. Yeah, same thing. Okay. So. But I don't know, do you like paper mail? No. Or, or a phone call. Okay. <laughs> or a phone call. I love that. Until I get up to see, it is, it's not going to happen in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have 250 unanswered emails on my phone. Okay. Oh. I have 600 something on my computer. Yeah, I want to check with Steve on his cards. Yeah. Okay. And then I didn't know if you had a cancellation policy, you know, like in front of other, or if there was any kind of way that you would do that, and when you would make a decision, et cetera. I didn't really have any questions on those. Yeah. Just because we're meeting to the winner. Um, what came up? He pretty much meet unless the town hall is closed. We can't actually use the team. Right. That would be here. Uh, I think we just take it as it comes. I mean, it's going to have to be pretty good, so I'm just going to have Yeah. Okay. We really need to. Well, we have a time limit, like legally, for a lot of time. Yeah, we also have an area that is public. Uh, we, we, uh, we put, they, they, they've been advertised. And the only way you can really continue to another date is by having in person to do a motion to continue. Okay. Otherwise, they have to re advertise it in the paper. And that costs money. And that's not okay. cheap. Yeah, we try to avoid that. Sounds fair. So I can do this. Who is interest willing to go out? Yes, like I said, I know you all have your you know, busy days and let me know who wanted to come on site visits and I want you to have a chance to get involved as you want to be. You know? I think I would just reach out to whoever on the is board. available. I think we ought to just, uh, if someone's, I think it depends on where the site is. Mm -hmm. Because, like, at the Riverside, I was way out of my depth. Okay. I'm more, yeah. I'm more attuned to fine land and stuff like that. I'm so, more, I'm more so I'm actually going to go better than I want to go with Patrice. Right, yeah. But it doesn't matter. I, mean, I would just reach out to each member that wants to attend. Yeah. And sometimes they can all attend, sometimes it's just one person. It won't be all four of us. So you just, whenever I have a site visit coming up, I'll just let y'all know, and if you want to yep. join, then join, and if not, then cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, OOC, order conditions, draft review, and meeting, meeting before approval or no? Oh. Okay. I know, I worded that strangely, yeah. but um, relevant to the MOI deal. So I'm going to draft up these orders. Do you want to uh, review them before we officially Close anything or, or we all do it. What we, what we should actually do it tonight, we, we should have a binding message. We should actually sign order conditions. I only brought one paperwork, but I, yeah, I didn't bring the two copies, though, so I don't know. Let me check the box. <laughs> There's a photocopy machine in there. I was just going to ask to get a copy of it. So we'll only make a copy of this okay. one. We'll all sign it. Yeah, sure. So that would be on that. That would be considered to run out of the signatures. Right. We, we go to the past. We have, we've all touched it, what we talked about the meeting, and this is what's actually the first of the orders. Yes. There's one in here. So you have to pay this one. Let's see. Exactly. Wow. There is. Oh, thank you. Whoever did this. Okay. Okay. So we have a copy. All right. Are we good? All right. So it fits in over the future. Thank you, Dan.
Right, have you been able to do any uh, workshop training or anything? I have, I do. I do a lot of space work, yeah. Um, I'll try to remember this. I think the people are going to do that. Thank you. 